Hello, everybody, and welcome to the newest edition of Sadie and Sean Have No Friends. And today, well, first of all, we have to thank our sponsor. They're amazing. It's Christiana Salon and Spa. And gosh, you guys, we are so close to school starting. And that is so important to take care of yourself. So you kick their asses right on the bus and you go get yourself a facial because it's been a long summer. Do you feel like it's been a long summer? I feel like it's flown by. Like, well, I can't believe that school's so already about to start. Does that make you sad or happy? Well, it makes me happy for my two older kids, but it makes me sad because Boone's going to kindergarten and he's not a baby. Like that's the, to me, that's the, that's the one like telltale sign that your kid has gone from baby to kid is once yeah. they start school. Well, I'm very excited. Murphy's are, <laughs> my computer is way too close. I'm sorry. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, why do I look so big? Oh, God, that's an awful question. I'm not going <laughs> to answer that. Sean looks so scared right now. Um, okay, Sean. Oh, so go to Christiana Salon and Spa uh, mm -hmm. and mention Sadie and Sean have no friends for 10% off. I read something this morning. Now, you know, I, I don't want to keep bringing this person up, okay? I don't want to keep bringing Hawk to girl up. I Goodness don't. gracious, but, starting to no, think listen, you're obsessed. Listen. <laughs> Listen, I have a very good reason for that, uh, because we've all been so focused on this is insane. What's going on? And then now, uh, guess who's back? Guess who's going to be in Playboy? Talk to a girl? <laughs> no, she's doing like some sort of, I think it's like an OnlyFans type thing. Do you remember that Morgan Walling concert where the fight broke out by the Porto Johns? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. Okay, so that was a long time ago. You'll remember that her name, everybody called her the romper stopper because she was wearing a romper. Mm -hmm. And everybody saw that video. It happened in Pittsburgh. And guess she's going to be in Playboy now. Good for her. How so, much is she getting paid for that? I don't know, but I saw she posted like a video on her social media that um, that came across. And she she's like at Playboy and let me tell you, I think she got some fake boobies. Hmm. I know. So she's going to. But I just think it's funny that now it's like we've been so focused on Hawk Tau girl that Tua. this one just Hawk to a girl. This is the last time I'm going to mention this girl. Just an FYI. I it. Every time you if say it comes that, up, I will it. say no. I will say no, we're not doing that. But I think that's hilarious. I didn't even you know. I thought it. they were you closing do down it. Playboy. I thought, well, no, I thought they were closing down Playboy because Hugh Hefner died and they sold the mansion. And I just thought that like Playboy, no one buys magazines anymore. I thought it was all going by the wayside. I didn't know that uh, this is honestly more astonishing to me that Playboy still exists more than Romper Stomper Girl is going to be in it. <laughs> it does exist. And it's who's who runs it now, I think, is his kid, Cooper Hefner. Now. Do you remember that show, Girls Next Door? Mm -hmm. Holy shit, that was a great show. It was great because it was just so... Hugh Hefner had what had to have been the perfect life. You know, I watched a documentary. There's one on Amazon about the, the whole Playboy brand. And it talks about how this dude, like... This this guy had, like, an amazing life. Like, multiple women. How? How? Because he started a magazine, I know, with money. If you money watch Girls anything. Next Door, he's got like peak, he had like peacocks and it was insane. Rich the people pool, problem. Yeah, he had like a zoo. There was like, the, at one point, I, I think they called it the zoo that was Did by they? the, yeah, and then PETA got involved and they had to call it something else, like a sanctuary, but it, it had monkeys and all kinds of stuff. But it, you, like you hear behind the scenes stories from these, the girls, the playmates and it was actually the the living conditions at the Playboy Mansion were really bad. It sounds like, like well, he, also he let like, the dogs piss and shit on the bed and didn't clean it up right, and it just <laughs> was it was it was not good. It was not cleanly, and you had to do a ninety year old dude. <laughs> I was gonna say I that. worry less <laughs> about the cleanliness of it than having to go upstairs. And in this documentary, it says he would have movie night. Yeah, where every once a week. it was like an it was an expectation you did not and you had to wear sexy pajamas to go and 
I mean, it's like this guy figured something out that just, I guess it is money. I guess it's yeah, money. It, it, well, money, power, fame. Yeah. I was, uh, you should watch this documentary. It's really good. What's it called? Um, I think it's just called, well, let me look it up. Hang on. I think it's just type in on Amazon Prime the playboy and it'll come okay. up but it's a documentary I've watched some documentaries i may have watched this one a long time ago and and just don't remember it but there's one where it talks about this one room that he had in the playboy mansion that was forever closed off it was the one room you couldn't go into and it's because it's the room where elvis hung out when he came to the playboy mansion and he supposedly had this giant orgy in there and oh yeah and after after that happened they closed off the room it was it was the elvis room was no longer you couldn't go in there well i mean I wonder how much they cleaned it up, though. I mean, I um, wonder what it looks like. Is there like condom wrappers on the floor? As gross as that is, but I mean, was there like crust in the carpet? Because from what what I remember about the mansion, the uh, is that uh, on one episode? Oh my god, I can't believe I remember this. On one episode, the sporty girl, you don't know because you didn't watch it, uh, but she kept talking about how I the carpet yeah. crunchy. It's because of the dog piss. <laughs> it could be because of other things. But I wonder, did they at least go in and clean up the wrappers and the the empty bottles of lube? I hope and not. Like like, I hope I hope that it's exactly the way that Elvis left it. And you just close the door and you lock it. And it's like a time capsule into 1970. Sex. The the exact way that Elvis left the room. I mean, why close off the room if that's not exactly what you're gonna do? <laughs> you're right. Well, I wonder what happened if they sold the mansion. Can't the did the new owners ever come out and go, you know what? We opened the door and wow, unless you know the backstory, but I guess it is the Playboy Mansion. If you own the Playboy Mansion, you have to open that door and at least take a peek. Like even That's if you plan I'm to saying. keep it, it's now yours and it's your right to open that door and look and see what's in there. You what would to. you do? Say out of this out of some crazy circumstance you find out you were somehow related to Hugh Hefner and you end up getting uh, his mansion would you let people go into the room yes here's would what you I would you go do. oh okay yes. yes okay I completely especially based on like the grossness of everything that I've heard about that place and I bet this is what they did like it's going to be completely renovated like it, carpet walls everything's tore out and, and you don't spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to live in a place if you're not going to be comfortable in it. I'm going to completely, it's going to be mine. So you, you would know. take out the Elvis um, sex room? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I take lots you of pictures. Take lots of pictures to say that it was there, but that was Hugh Hefner's thing. Like, that's not mine now. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Well, that makes sense. What's weird is like, uh, so there, there's the room that you can't go into at the Playboy Mansion because he had a, Elvis had an orgy in there allegedly and then uh at graceland you can't go into the bathroom where he died but hold on you can't go into the whole upstairs of graceland so it's not oh, just that's, the bathroom yeah. well but you i'm just talking about like where the bathroom is seems like wherever elvis went there's like that's weird that they shut rooms down but okay i don't blame them yeah i don't either um can we transition into something that happened today and i'm just like oh my god like being a parent is so hard. It's really hard all the time. It's all the time hard. And sometimes you get, <laughs> Sean, I'm sorry, I'm building up to it because I'm just dying. Um, so this morning, Murphy is practically an only child um, because she's so young. And so I always feel bad. Like during the summer, I always try to like have her friends come over. And because we live in a great neighborhood where there are a lot of her friends. And so Every day I feel like we got kids coming here and we got, so she wanted to invite one of her friends today. And so I text the mom and I said, hi, uh, Murphy would love to play with so-and-so. Um, is that okay? And she said, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. She said, well, I'm at work, but I can text the nanny to see what they're up to. She may be sleeping I said, okay, let me know. And she goes, there's one rule, no YouTube. And I said, oh yeah, okay. She <laughs> goes, Murphy showed her daughter horror clips on regular YouTube on a TV. 
and it uh, traumatized her. <laughs> Do you not watch oh the kids God. when they're at your house? I said, oh, my God, stop it. I'm so sorry. It's all good. She described the movie to me. Here We keep going, and I'm already dying. It was a clown with a skinny wheel. Oh my God, it's the saw guy. My kid is showing the saw guy to my to this girl um, with the skinny wheel where they land on death. One had a tunnel with creepy eyes. I said, oh my God. She said, the only one that we, so you know, there was a whole conversation had about like, what the F is going on at these people's house? Uh, she said the only one that was border like crazy, which another thing is I am really good at checking in and being like, what do you guys do? Yeah. You know, but also she's kind of, she's seven. So what I'm not going to, I can't sit there and, oh, that's so naughty of her. Um, okay. Here's the last one. <laughs> oh my God. She said the only video that was borderline crazy Involved a blonde girl in bed with a black guy who broke in. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I don't think you don't can watch like, say. I don't I think don't. you can watch real gnarly, gnarly things on YouTube. I so think you can. Good. I think you could. Well, clearly you can look up. a. <gasps> oh, well, yeah, you can watch like horror movies, but I don't I don't think you can watch like people doing it. I don't know. Did Murphy tap into the dark web? And I just am such a shitty mom. I'm like in and out of the living room. Like, hey, gals, you guys want me to pop some popcorn for your movie? And it's <laughs> this weird game theft auto channel. And oh, oh, but you know what? It, in a way, it does kind of I'm like, it's OK. I mean, I feel terrible. I apologize like a million times. Uh, oddly enough, I don't think she can play today. And so that's fine. Maybe never again, which would be sad. But <laughs> like Sophie, I remember had a friend over when she was around this age and she went onto the computer and showed her friend a clip from the movie It. Again, where do I pick up my parent of the year award? Yeah, and your, your kids traumatized and this clowns. little girl. No, I just feel like, oh, no, Your I had kids no are brave. Like, I wouldn't have to worry about Boone showing that to anybody because he's so scared of it himself. He wouldn't do it. He couldn't. He <laughs> well, couldn't bring himself don't to worry. It. So at Murphy. least you got brave little things. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't call it brave. I, I'm like concerned. Uh, so I took YouTube off of everything. Now, the hard thing about that is it's like pre-programmed into the TV, into the Alexa, yeah. into the. You can put so a code on it. Well, I need more. I just need to get rid of it. I just need to get rid of it. It's not like you have to have YouTube. But I will tell you that she is more into you. She does also have YouTube kids. Now, my fatal flaw, I believe, was that she was using my iPad to play. And uh, and I have, like, regular YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I don't know. Oh, no. I'm, like, really embarrassed. <laughs> and I... I'm just so, I, I feel like I failed. I failed on this one. Cause you know, this mom went home, probably her kids been sleeping in her bed every single night and I'm like oblivious. Oh. Yeah, that's not good. I had to, I had to put a code on YouTube because I was, Quentin is always on it and he was watching these. He watches other people play video games is what he watches. Yes. But then there was this one guy he was watching and he wasn't even embarrassed by it. I came and I was like, what are you watching? And it's this dude and the language coming out of his mouth while he was shooting people playing this video <sighs> game. I was just like, dude, you can't watch this. You have a you have a five year old brother running around here that's going to hear this. Not only that, but you shouldn't be watching this. Like I'm embarrassed for you, and so I had to put a code on YouTube. Also, shame. shame. My kids don't have friends, and so I don't have to worry about them showing this to other people. Only each other, but still. My kids are so naughty, but Sophie did grow up to be a very caring child, and so did Cooper. And so I feel like okay, maybe they just do sucky things and this is embarrassing. And then I feel like a shit mom because it's summertime. It's the end of summer. And I am just like hanging on by a thread. You know, at the beginning of summer, you're like, we're going to go to the library every Tuesday. We've been to the library twice. That, that fell off the wheel. I don't know. I just, 
we're going to go to the Discovery Center, the museum, the zoo. I just, it's just too much. I need school to start because I am effing this up like so bad. Have you talked to Murphy about it yet? Are you? Yeah, I said, because she keeps saying, like, is she coming over? This is in real time right now. And I keep having to say, well, I haven't heard anything back. But I did say, you know, we have to talk about the fact that you watch some videos with me. I said her name. I'm going to have to edit. (laughs) I'm going to beep that out. Uh, I said you were watching videos with your friend and they were really scary. And what were you doing? And she goes, all right, we won't watch any more of those. And I'm like, no, no. (laughs) Deeper issue. <laughs> Dig deeper in this one. This is not just like, a, you know, oh, God. Oh, how do you? Ex- well, you know what? You just got to get rid of it all. Well, you know what that is? That is boredom at its finest. When kids get but- bored, they do crazy weird shit. And so you got to keep them entertained. And unfortunately, both of us are having trouble with that. My two older kids are going crazy. Like I'm waiting for any minute to get a phone call that they burned down my house because they are so bored. The idea was we run so crazy all the time that this summer we're not signing them up for anything. They're just going to stay home and it's going to be a chance for them before they get into the school year to chill. And it has backfired bad because they are so insanely bored. Yeah. And then, you know, you're like, okay, we've done this. We've done that at least here. And it's just like, well, okay, now you can watch the iPad. I feel like a terrible mother. She's really into that game roadblocks or whatever. Her and her friends all join together and play this game. I don't think there's any burglars breaking in and sleeping with the woman. And (laughs) and so I feel somewhat safe. I am so mortified. I'm sorry. That's where my train of thought is right now because I just read back over the text and I was like, oh my God. (laughs) So anyway, um, that's what's been going on in my life. Does this mom Um, know about this podcast slash watch watch it? Because I feel like if she did, it would explain a lot. It would, wouldn't it? I I should have just texted back and been like, here's episode one. Here's a link. Just go from there and you'll see why we ended up where we are at right now. No, um, no, she's actually like a really cool mom. Like she's just, she's really like chill about stuff. So that's why I'm like, this must have been some some messed up stuff but i guess the movie saw that clown scares me and i'm 41 years old so what why would she do that it's just like a a, whether you're seven (laughs) or whether you're 70 (laughs) whether you're seven or 70 i think that their adrenaline's a thing and it probably gets her pumped up yeah it gets them pumped like it's so scary that at seven years old it's just like it's just forbidden and scary, and it gets it gets my juices flowing. I know. Moon last Good. night it, on a similar thing. I turned on the TV in bed, which doesn't happen very often these days because we're so busy. Like when we go to bed, we go to bed. But last night we had a little downtime. I turned on the TV, and I'm an old man, and I watch the Travel Channel a lot. And usually it's like a legit show. But last night there was some sort of it was called Haunted Hospitals. And haunted hospitals Ooh. is like a recreation of people who have seen ghosts in hospitals. And I wasn't trying to watch the show. It's just what was on. And Boone is sitting there like in awe like this, watching as these like scary things are popping out at these people at this hospital. I was like, dude, why are you watching that? Why Why didn't you tell me to turn it off? He was like, I want to watch. I'm so scared, but I want to watch. And I'm going to sleep in your I know, room but the you know what? my life, but I want to watch. Yeah, because when the sun goes down, then they automatically are like, I made a bad decision. <laughs> You're like, okay. There was no great. going to bed for him last night. Because of that. You know, those but, shows yeah. always sound so appealing because I do love that kind of stuff. I think it's interesting. And, and, uh, but then you watch it. I can't do the reenactments. The reenactments are so bad that I, I end up being like, I can't. It's the same reason I can't really watch. Um, lifetime movie network because I'm like, this is so bad. This is so bad. Even during the holidays when it's kind of acceptable to watch, you know, Lifetime and Hallmark and all that, I can't do it. It's so You're shitty. You're not a Hallmark Christmas movie girl? 
I'm not because the plot is always the same. Always. There's a man in a pickup truck and there's a crate of apples in the back. And he <laughs> he lives in the town and he works at the hardware store. And a very fancy rich woman from New York City comes in because she just bought the property or some shit like that. And he ends up softening her to the country life and they fall in love. And she starts wearing flannel more and more throughout the episode. And then at the end, I mean, that's literally every show. Lifetime, some get, times will get dirty, like down and dirty about, really? you know, like, yeah, there'll be movies like uh, My Husband, My Rapist and shit like that. And it's like got John Stamos and, you know, it's just like, it's really deep, heavy shit. There was one where it was like, uh, see, I say I don't watch it, but listen to me. But they had one movie and it was about, this is a true story, though. A cheerleader in Texas, she didn't make varsity. She made JV. So what would you do as a parent? You'd be like, oh, you know, that's a tough one. But keep working and you'll get there. No, this woman hired a hitman to kill a varsity cheerleader so a spot would open. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. This is like the stuff that, you know, hey, I probably shouldn't let my daughter watch any of these things like Lifetime or Hallmark because they pop in with some of this shit and you're like, oh, my God. There's a lot of them with uh, the same actors. Anyway, I'm done explaining the Hallmark Channel. Um, They've been playing. The Hallmark Channel has been playing uh, as we do this in real time. It's the 31st of July, all of July. They've been playing nothing but Christmas movies and calling it Christmas in July. I don't know if they do this every year, but I know this because as I scroll through the TV guide, it's always a Christmas movie on in the middle of July. Yeah. And I wonder what I they can tell. I'm sure. I wonder what the ratings are like. Like, are people really sitting on their couch when it's 97 degrees outside watching Christmas I movies? I think so. I think people just... I think especially in this day and age where we're at in the world, I think people need something pure and something. And when you do watch the Hallmark, now Lifetime's the one that gets a little, whoa, damn, occasionally. Hallmark is just, it's I'll, just I'll feel Hallmark. good all the time. That's all yeah. it is. It's not, no one gets murdered in Hallmark. No one yells at each other. The parents help you bake cookies you're a single dad working at the school and a single, I'm sorry. I'm just, that's another one. You should, uh, this should be another career. You should just write Hallmark movies. You'd be good at dude. it. You know who does that? Who? He's now going to be on his fourth one this Christmas season. This is true. I'm not making this up. Blake Shelton. Really? He writes Hallmark well, movies, Hallmark Christmas movies. And you wouldn't think he's... that out of old Blake Shelton, but he does. No, I do believe that because that has got to be the easiest cush job in the world. Because <laughs> again, I just spewed off two different movie ideas at you and that's all you have to do. You just got to, you got to add certain ingredients and it's the exact same show over and over again. Sounds like pornos. <laughs> and the I, could write, I could write one of those. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be a crate of apples first. <laughs> No, <laughs> not in mine. There would be so no apples. <laughs> so tomorrow, I'm going to a doctor's appointment to get my hormone pellet put in. I and thought you already got it put in. You have to go every three months. Oh, so you're and getting another suck. one put in. Yeah, yeah. It, it like How's it, it been like working, dissolved. by the way? You haven't given us an update in a while. You've been on this hormone pellet for like four or five months at least. Yeah, no, it's working amazingly well. That's good. I mean, it, so I do it because I, <laughs> I get like where I don't, I, I, my sex drive just dies and I would rather do taxes. And so then I'm like, wow, you know, something might not be right because I'm in my forties now. And don't they say your thirties, is it your thirties or forties where you hit that sexual yeah, dynamo? Women, it's supposed to be like as you near menopause. So it's like closer to your 40s and 50s where you get real horny. Way to make this depressing for me. <laughs> but no, I go in and I get these pellets put in at the doctor's office. And what they do is they cut you a little bit. They cut where you at? like on your butt. Hmm. You know, they got to get close to the source of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they cut you this much. 
and then they put a like a metal straw. This to me is the worst part into the cut. And then they just drop these little pellets and they look like rabbit pellets. They probably are. And I'm just paying a ridiculous amount for rabbit pellets, but who I wouldn't know. And you, uh, would. are you, you say they're working. So yeah, they're working and I don't know. And so that's, I'm going to go tomorrow at, and get this done again. I, oh, I hate it. Do is they have anything? to cut you again or do they just leave the same cut? No, so they, can go they have right to back cut you there. again. It has to, you have to switch sides every time you go. Oh, it's so weird because I think about Ryan and how he never even goes to the doctor. Never, Same. never I goes. Been, I hate to say this, but it's true. I I don't think I've been to the doctor in 10 years. Do you think you will get bad a... news? I might be dying inside and I wouldn't know. I have no clue. Zero idea. I don't know because there have been a few instances in the past like year and a half where there's been like in my family, my sister got incredibly sick, had to have multiple surgeries that she had an infection and they did not know where it was at. But every doctor that changed shifts had a different idea and a different procedure. And I shit you not, she was in the hospital for like three weeks and every day she got a colonoscopy. She got you know, they went in and tried to laparoscopically find out what's going on. And then they had to cut her open. And then, oh, you know what, this doctor. And so part of me, as I get older, I'm like, are, are you guys just throwing darts at a board and hoping that this is what this is and how to fix it? Because to this day, now she might end up going to the Mayo Clinic because she's still in pain. It's terrible. Dang, and yeah. uh, so so doesn't, now I don't doesn't inspire me to go. Well, that's what I'm saying is like at one time, I, I still go for annually, but at one time I was like, you have to go. If it was one day over the date that I had my physical, I, I thought, oh God, I, I've, I've laughed to where now I'm kind of like, do you fucking know what you're talking about? Or are you just saying, and listen, there are some doctors, the one I'm going to tomorrow, she's awesome. But there are some where you're like, I can't believe I paid a copay for that. Well, I can't I believe think Sometimes they probably just don't know. And so it is throwing darts because I, I don't know. I, and especially when or it's three just, of them, three different ones that are like, I don't know. It's so different and weird. I, I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, I don't I just got to be hard. It's not like word. a car. Like when your car, if if the alternator goes bad, it's an, it, you know, it's the alternator. You fix the alternator. But if your liver goes bad, there's everybody's liver acts a little different and does a little different. and so. It's not just as simple as, oh, liver, we'll just replace the liver like the alternator. I, I'm sure that being a doctor is very hard. I'm sure being a doctor is hard, but I do think that there are a lot of people. And, hey, I'd be one of them. I'd probably wing it most of the time and be like, or I'd err on the side of safety, which would make me kind of a, a shitty doctor, too, where I'd be like, I think you need you need to see every other doctor for every <laughs> test. I'd be That's why the them general away. ones are perfect. Yeah, because they don't do anything. They're just like, yeah. yeah, there's something wrong with your heart. You need to go to a heart doctor. Or there's something wrong with your eye. You need to go to an eye doctor. Thank you, Captain Obvious. I'm happy I came. I know. And that's what I'm saying is I feel like I've left appointments before where I've been like, I got to pay for that. <laughs> I got to pay. And they don't know what's wrong. And it's just so weird. And you see it so much in urgent care, like in yeah. urgent care. I. Well, that's too deep of a story, but I have gone to an one time I went to urgent care and I uh, was having a miscarriage. I know, God, this got dark super quick. And I walk in and the nurse goes, oh, my gosh, we'll get you right in. And so I'm crying. I'm like sad. And I'm just like, shit, because we had just that morning gone to that nurse's appointment where you they're like, here's your due date and here's what oh. we're going to have you do. And then I left and then that happened. And so um, I'm sitting there and then they rushed this dude in who got stabbed at the 7-Eleven and he got <laughs> stabbed. And of course that took precedent. Where did he get stabbed bleeding. at? Where was um, the wound? In his side, like in his oh, side. Oh yeah, that's important. So he's got like his, there's some, he had people with them. I'm assuming there was family. They're screaming and I'm just, they totally kind of forgot about me. And so like an hour went by and the shitty thing is then they saw me and the doctor was like, yeah, I think this is what happened. 
you lost the bit. And I'm like, well, no shit, Sherlock. Like, but then what am I expected to do? It's just, (laughs) I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, that's not good. Gosh, Sean, thank you so much. I I mean, I don't, I feel, I feel weird (laughs) commenting on that story. I don't, I don't have anything good to say. So sometimes it's best to just shut your mouth. Because it was such a sad story. That is a sad story. And it is. I, well, I don't no, and, I don't exactly know where you're trying to go with that. Like, were you looking for the doctor to say, save the baby? What were you looking for? Well, he was just so cold. He was very much like, this is what happened. Like, wh- why are you here? And then when I tried to leave because the guy got stabbed, the police had taped everything off. Because the oh. ambulance had to come and get stabbed, guy. Because who the fuck goes to urgent care when someone has knifed you at a 7-Eleven? Yeah, you would think uh, that's an ER sort of thing. Yeah. And so, no. So they came, And then they had to, like, interview people. It was just fucking weird. And I'm like, I just want to go home. So I guess, did, I don't did know. Did Abby guy get, did he survive? I never found out. I hope he did. Because that could have been the happy ending to this sad story. <laughs> He did survive, Sean, and he never got stabbed at a convenience store again in a shady fucking way. Well, that's really nice. You shouldn't steal fucking Slurpees and you won't get stabbed. (laughs) See, I went, you went from positive, I went to positive and you went back down. He learned, he learned his lesson. He survived. He got stabbed for stealing the Coca-Cola Slurpee and now he won't ever steal a Slurpee again. Sometimes you got to get stabbed to learn. Oh. (laughs) Moral of the story. This has been such like, this has been like a fever dream of 30 minutes, but we're, we're out of time now. I'm sorry if I told you anything incredibly disturbing about myself, like what my child did or, you know, like sad stories, but you know, that's an honest story that I just told you. And I don't know. Doctors. I don't know. I'm kind of like, what? I like them. Doctors. I'm on team doctor. Sorry that Sadie hates on you. (laughs) <laughs> i don't up. come see you i haven't in 10 years but i still trust you mm, we gotta all thank right. our sponsor christiana salon and spa also we gotta thank casey's pest control services they sponsor the pet of the week the pet of the week is actually up on our social media right now so if you're looking for an animal for your next best friend well this is the place to go and we're working with an amazing rescue and uh, it's second home rescue and that's it. Go look at this dog. You may fall in love. I feel like I need a palate cleanser after yeah, this go episode. Yeah, get one. All right, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go brush my teeth. What does that mean? <laughs> that my teeth feel like they need to be brushed. Goodbye. <laughs>